Welcome back Wealth Giants to another episode. If you are new here, my name is Ryan. Welcome to the channel. In today's episode, we are talking about income statements. We're talking about how to read them, interpret them, understand them, know what everything means, but also importantly, know the crucial information you need to know to determine a healthy income statement versus a bad income statement. Now, I have a free resource down in the description below. Click that link, it takes you to a Google spreadsheet that I made that goes over what you're looking for as well as what things are as, and what they mean and that'll help you and guide you through an income statement even after you have finished this video. Now, I'm gonna go over that, in, that free resource first, and then we're gonna use that to interpret an income statement. So please stay tuned, but first, if you're new to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It helps grow the channel. It helps show that you're interested. Also on top of that, if you find value in this video, smash the like button. It helps people like you find my videos. Also, it tells me that uh, I'm making stuff that you guys are interested in and that is very important for me to know so that I can help you guys grow in investing. Anyways, let's go ahead and jump into this. All right, welcome to the income statement cheat sheet. Now, this is what I made for you guys. If you want to zoom in, go up here and just zoom up to 150. That's what usually fills out my screen. It might be different for years but it works for mine, so just fiddle around with it until you get it filled out. You might be wondering how to navigate this, and I'm gonna go over that real quick with you. Over here in the top left, in white and yellow, are your key terms, okay? You need to know these. You need to know how to distinguish between them on the income statement. These are what you need to know to be able to read the income statement. Uh, anything else is just fluff, uh, not necessarily unimportant fluff, but these are what you really, really need to pay attention to. And if you find a good enough company, you can go into the fluff and kind of figure out if that is what you need to read and learn about in that company. Um, then down here, we have some key calculations for the income statement you wanna pay attention to, uh, but we'll go over that in just a minute. I will leave a timestamp up here in case you don't wanna stick around for the definitions, I'm just gonna go through them real quick for those of you who do not know it. Uh, so right here we have the top line, which is our total revenue, and down here are the bottom line, which is our net income after all of the expenses. Okay, anything in yellow is our core definitions that are the most vital to knowing the income statement. And then just here highlighted in blue is their definitions. Okay, so total revenue can be also termed as net revenue or net sales. This is all the money made in a period of time, whether it be a quarter or a trailing 12 month period of time, like 2019 or 2018 or something like that. The cost of revenue can also be termed as COGS, cost of goods sold or cost of services. Okay, this is the cost to make and give a product or service. Okay, so every product that you sell typically has a cost behind it, that, like for example, a t-shirt. You sell a t-shirt for $50, which is your total revenue, and then the cost of that t-shirt was $20. So therefore, the cost of revenue was 20. Uh, now, underneath that, you got the gross profit or gross income, okay? This is the remaining income for other company expenses, okay? When you take the total revenue, highlighted in maroon here, uh, subtract the cost of revenue. So Gross profit is total revenue right here, subtracting the cost of revenue. Now, all this money can be used to pay off all the other expenses. Now, operating expenses is another key term that you really need to pay attention to, which is the cost of running a business, okay? Which includes things like the SG and A, which is selling, general, and administrative. Okay, this includes things like rent, advertising, marketing, management, salary, bonuses, and so on. Okay, underneath that is your research and development. Okay, that is also termed as R&D. Okay, this is important for companies that like Tesla who are uh, researching battery cells and uh, battery cell technology, uh, solar technology, autonomous driving. You know, these are things that will make them money in the future, creating better and stronger products for the future, 
Okay, this is very important and you want them to put money into this so that they can grow and become better. Now, just below that, we have the operating income or loss, okay? Hopefully, we are looking at operating income and not operating loss. This is income before interest expenses and income tax expenses. It is equal to gross profit minus operating expenses. So gross profit right up here minus the expenses, okay? So this is the money that you basically have left over after all of your company's expenses and expenditures. Now, that's not the only expenses that we have to worry about. We also have net non-operating interest income expenses. Now, this doesn't always end up being negative, but it is most of the time negative because it is basically the interest you have to pay towards loans, mortgages on property, uh, and things like that. Now, you can always gain interest on other assets and stuff like that, so this could be positive. Same with other income expenses. Now, other income expenses is expenses not directly related to business core operations. Okay, so basically, it doesn't really have anything affiliated with the business. Maybe it's an investment that they made uh, or something along those lines. Down here at pre-tax income, just before we pay taxes, this is operating income or loss, so this value right here, operating income or loss, plus net non-operating interest income expense, so this value right here, and then total other expenses right here. Now you add it, now if it's a negative, obviously you would subtract from the operating income or loss, but if the value is positive, you would just add it, okay? So keep that in mind. After that, you have tax provision. Okay, this is the total tax paid from your remaining pre-tax income. Okay, and once you pay that off, you are left with your net income common stock shareholders or net profit or net earnings or just net income altogether. This value will then go to the cash flow statement and we'll talk about that in another video. Now we have our calculations. Gross margin is our first one, okay? Because it's at the top, it starts with the uh, gross profit being divided by the total revenue. Now, if you see this increasing, like the percentage, that means that the company is getting better deals on their products and still making a killing with their sales. Now, if it's stagnant, that means that they're not really negotiating their prices and, you know, they're, they're paying the same amount as they always have and they are maintaining the equal amount of sales versus cost of revenue. Uh, then if it's decreasing, if the percent of gross margin is decreasing, that means that they are spending more on product over time than uh, trying to find better deals. So that's the, my personal way of using this. I'm not a financial advisor, so don't like use this as like, oh, this is what I'm using it for and this is what everybody uses it for. This is how I use it personally. Now other people might use it and that might be the correct way, but that's how I use it. Uh, operating profit margin. Now this is something that everybody uh, in the investing community knows about. Okay, so operating income, so this value right here, divided by total revenue. Now, if it's above 15%, it is a pass, okay? It is doing really well. You have enough uh, operating profit to be able to pay off all the other additional expenses like your interests or your inc other income expenses or your tax as well without going into the negative with your net income. Okay. If it's less than that, you might end up in the negative with the net income, uh, not something that you want to fall into that category. Now, is this always a guarantee that it's a bad company to invest in? Not so much, but you want to be very cautious if it's less than 15%. And then you got your net profit margin, which is taking your net income, the, the bottom line, and dividing it by the total revenue, which is your top line. Now, if it's 5% or lower, then you have a bad profit margin. You want to very be very cautious of this company. If it's at 10%, that's about the average of most companies. It's good, just keep doing your research into the company, you might find a hidden gem. Um, and then if it's 20% or above, you found a great company, keep digging into it, 
you are most likely going to find a great investment here. Now, do you go off the income statement alone? No, but it is a good start so let's go ahead and use this to analyze an income statement. So we're gonna go ahead and analyze Apple on Yahoo Finance. Yahoo Finance, just because it's a very common uh, place to do research for companies, uh, they have their income statements, their balance sheets, their cash flow statements, and you can look at it from a quarterly basis or an, an annual basis. Uh, just remember that the values, the numbers here, this isn't 273 million. Uh, this is actually multiplied by 1,000. All numbers are in thousands. So it's actually 273 billion, which is a lot. So let's go ahead and review this balance sheet based on uh, the cheat sheet that I gave you. Okay, so the first thing on the cheat sheet we want to look at is total revenue and cost of revenue. Okay, so total revenue you got right here and cost of revenue is right here. So as you could see in 2017, they had 229 billion in revenue and the cost of that revenue was 141 billion. So, you know, you could calculate the gross profit margin and determine its uh, percentage and then compare it to the next couple of years. I'm not gonna do that right now just because that takes up a little bit too much time and I don't want you to get frustrated and overwhelmed. So now you also have 2018, you got your revenue. And if you look, uh, the revenue is trending upwards for 2017 to 2018 and then drops in 2019 and isn't quite there and then goes back up in 2020. Now you want to kind of figure out what happened in 2018. Was it a amazing year for the company or did something happen in 2019? So you want to verify that with the 10 K's for 2018 and 2019, figure out why there was a drop in their revenue. And that way you can figure out whether or not that could happen again and see if the company has resolved that issue. Now, the next thing on the cheat sheet is our gross profit. Okay, so gross profit, you calculate that by doing the total revenues minus the cost of revenue. So 273 minus 169 is 104 and change. Okay, so we can see here that after the cost of goods, we got 88 billion, 101 billion, 98 billion. So it's not much of a difference to worry about too much, but you still kind of want to know what happened. Why, why weren't they able to continually grow and then you come back here into 2020 and they they killed it uh trailing 12 months that's what ttm stands for so the last 12 months uh compared so not doing too shabby it could be better compared to 2020 uh but it's doing pretty good okay now the next thing we want to look at from our cheat sheet is operating expenses okay so this is the expenses that uh are used to drive the company. So if we do the drop down, oh wait, not that one. If we do the operating expenses right here, so we got selling general and administrative. Now this includes like uh, advertisement, uh, salaries, and things like that. Okay, this is what drives the company. This is what uh, the company uses to drive the company. So as you can see here, it increases but isn't overwhelmingly increased, okay? And it, it kind of goes up at the same rate as the total revenue and the gross profit. And then you have your research and development. Remember I said that this is very important, especially for uh, tech companies and medical companies, scientific companies, because their whole premise of their company is creating more stuff and better stuff for the public to consume. So you see that they've increased their R&D, very good. Remember SGM, SGNA for selling general and administrative, and then research and development is R&D, okay? All of these add up to your operating expenses, okay? So operating expenses is how much you use to drive the company. Now, what's next on the cheat sheet is our operating income or loss. Now, obviously, Apple's going to have a income because they are an amazing company. But you can see here that it is increasing up to 2018 and then goes down just like in the 
the revenue. So we want to check those 10 Ks for sure. But operating income, we can go back to our cheat sheet and check how to calculate this. So it's gross profit minus operating expenses. So we got our gross profit 104 minus operating expenses 37. And that's going to come out to 67. Okay, 67 billion. Okay, we can do that through all of these. It'll be the same equation all the way through. Okay, now that we have our operating income, we have to do the additional expenses. But as I said in the cheat sheet, the net non-operating interest income expense is not always negative and neither is other income expenses. They can be positive as well. And if you come here and look, these are all positive for the net non-operating interest income expenses, but other income expenses, it's positive for the last 12 months, but it's negative for 2020, it's positive for 2019, it's negative for 2018. So keep that in mind. Now we have our pre-tax income, okay? And that is operating income plus the net non-operating interest income expense and the other income expense. So we're gonna do 67 plus 1 plus 0.1 and that's going to come out to 68 billion and then next on the list is your tax provision which is 9.8 billion okay you're going to take your pre-tax income and subtract the 9.8 billion and you're going to end up with 58 billion now there's a bunch of other stuff down here but it's not necessarily vital to understanding the income statement this right here from your top line to your bottom line is the most important part this stuff is important, but you want to get through the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow before you dive deeper into this. And you can also look at that stuff in the statistics and not worry so much about it in the uh, income statement. Now, if we come back to our cheat sheet, we have our net profit margin. Okay, let's calculate that. Remember, 5 is bad, 10 is good, and 20 is excellent. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to here, pull up our calculator. Okay, so we're going to see Apple's uh, net income, so 58. I'm not going to type in all the values because I just wanted to make this an example. You would type in all the values though, divided by your total revenue, 273 billion. So that equals 0.21 multiplied by 100 and that's going to come out to be 21%. So that is really good. Okay, so we really want to look into Apple more and see if it really is a good buy right now. Now, we can also go a step further in operating profit margin. So we got our operating income right here. Okay, so let's pull up the calculator. And we are going to do 67 divided by 273 and that comes out to 0.24 and multiplied by 100 of course and that's 24.5 percent and remember we said as long as it's above 15 percent that is amazing now i'm sure that if we did the calculations for gross margin we would see it increasing in the gap so that means that it is, they're finding better deals and cheaper ways to make the quality products that they make. So that there is a great way to analyze the income statement using the cheat sheet that I made. So as you can see, it's not that challenging to analyze an income statement once you actually know what you're looking for. And once you actually get used to it, you can actually throw that away, add a few more things that you feel are important. That way you can better equip yourself when you are deciding whether or not to invest in a company. Anyways, that's what I got for you guys. If you learned something or felt like it was valuable, please consider smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you want to learn more from me, please consider subscribing by hitting that ugly mug over to my right. It looks just like this one, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.